In 1941, during the time when the Guernsey Islands were controlled by German soldiers, four friends were out walking in the wilderness one evening. However, they got stopped by the soldiers because it was past the curfew imposed by the Germans. To avoid trouble, one of them came up with a story, saying they were returning from a meeting of their book club, named the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Initially, the soldiers didn't believe them and were about to arrest them. But after explaining and showing some evidence, the soldiers finally let them go home. Jumping ahead to January 1946, a writer named Juliet Ashton was promoting her latest book, written using her pen name as he bickers staff. Juliet's publisher and close friend, Sidney Stark, asked her to write about the importance of literature for the Times Literary Supplement. After the book promotion, Sidney showed Juliet a new apartment he had arranged for her. Although it was much nicer than her current one, Juliet couldn't forget the painful memories of the war that had taken her parents' lives. She decided to stay in her old apartment and thanked Sidney for his kindness. One night, Juliet received a letter from Dawsey Adams, who lives on the Guernsey Islands. Adams is a fan of Juliet's books and had a copy of her essays of Elia by Charles Lamb. He wanted to know where to find a bookstore in England to buy another book by the same author. Adams also mentioned that he was part of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, a book club that meets every Friday night. Originally, it was formed to trick German soldiers during the war. Even though the German army has left the Guernsey Islands, the book club continues because reading has become a habit for them. Adams wants more books to add to his reading collection. Juliet felt happy after reading Adams' letter because she discovered a book club with a unique name, so she decided to reply to the letter. Additionally, she sent another book by Charles Lamb and his sister Mary Lamb, titled Tales from Shakespeare. In her letter, Juliet asked Adams to tell her more about the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, how it started, and why it was named like that. In the beginning, the name the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society was chosen accidentally. Adams and his friends began with small gatherings where they exchanged food and conversed with each other. As time went by, they started spending more and more time together, reading books by famous authors and discussing them. This eventually led to the creation of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, where Adams and others became increasingly enthusiastic about reading various books. They didn't allow poor lighting or limited reading materials to deter them because they were eager to explore different perspectives and gain new insights. Juliet was moved by Adams' description of the book-loving community on the Guernsey Islands. She replied to Adams, expressing her desire to visit the islands and meet the book-loving community. The next day, Juliet spoke to Sidney and informed him that she would be away for a week to meet the book-loving group on the Guernsey Islands. Initially, Sidney refused because Juliet was still working for the Times Literary Supplement. However, Juliet managed to persuade him because she wanted to visit and write an article about the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society and life on the islands. Surprisingly, on the day she departs, Juliet's boyfriend, Mark, proposes to her in front of everyone at the ferry. Juliet accepts, and they plan to marry after she returns from the Guernsey Islands. Upon arriving at the Guernsey Islands, Juliet hurried to find a place to stay and bumped into Adams. She asked him about accommodation, but since they hadn't met before, Adams casually directed her to the post office to inquire about available lodgings. While at the post office, Juliet met a member of the book-loving community named Ibn Ramsey and his grandson Eli. Learning that Juliet was a famous writer visiting their community, Eben treated her like an esteemed guest and asked Eli to escort her to an inn. Upon reaching the inn, Juliet was quickly shown to a rented room by the innkeeper's wife, who seemed interested in the diamond ring Mark had given her, which adorned her ring finger. Feeling uneasy, Juliet took off the ring and put it away. That evening, which coincidentally was Friday night, Juliet eagerly visited the home of a woman named Amelia Madri, where members of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society gathered every Friday. There, she met other community members, including Isola Pribby. Juliet learned that one of the founding members, Elizabeth, who was also Amelia's daughter, was absent as she was overseas. However, Elizabeth's young daughter, Kit, was present. As everyone got ready to begin the meeting, Adams showed up and was surprised to see Juliet there. After introductions and some chatting, Adams and the others invited Juliet to read a book by Anne Bront. Following Juliet's reading, they started discussing various famous literary works like Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, Anna Karenina, and others. Each person shared their thoughts and arguments about the books, making the meeting lively and enjoyable. After the reading and discussion, 
they serve Juliet potato peel pie, a dish that had become the community's signature. Juliet was delighted to be among fellow book lovers who were so eager to discuss literature, and warmly welcomed her. However, her happiness and the friendly atmosphere quickly changed when she mentioned her plan to write an article about the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society for the Times Literary Supplement. Suddenly, everyone went quiet. Even Amelia reacted negatively to the idea, assuming that Juliet's visit to their community was solely for her own interests. Feeling regretful, Juliet goes with Adams and Elizabeth's daughter, Kit, back to the inn. Kit now lives with Adams since Elizabeth went abroad. Juliet apologizes to Adams for her earlier behavior, feeling it was a bit arrogant. However, Adams reassures her that it's fine and explains that Amelia is cautious and doesn't trust people she just met easily. Before Juliet goes into the inn, Adams gives her a flower as a thank you for giving him the book he wanted. The next day, Juliet calls Sydney to share her excitement about meeting the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society and being part of their group. However, when Juliet suggests writing an article about the community, they decline. Juliet tells Sydney that her boyfriend proposed to her, and they plan to marry soon. Later, Juliet talks with Eli, who explains that Elizabeth was taken by German soldiers years ago, when the Guernsey Islands were still under German control. Despite this, everyone remained hopeful that Elizabeth would return to them soon. In the afternoon, Juliet and Adams take a walk along the beach, where Adams recalls the harshness of the German soldiers during the war. During their conversation, Juliet asks about Elizabeth's arrest, but Adams doesn't give many details. Juliet then approaches Pribby and asks about Elizabeth's arrest. Pribby reveals that Elizabeth's sister suffered greatly at the hands of the German army during the war. Fuming, Elizabeth cursed at a passing convoy of German soldiers, which led to her capture. Pribby explained that Amelia rejected Juliet's idea to write an article about the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society because she had lost her two daughters. Pribby feared that such an article could bring back painful memories Amelia had been trying to forget. Understanding this, Juliet approached Amelia and assured her that she wouldn't write the article. Instead of going back home as planned, Juliet decided to stay in the Guernsey Islands to help Amelia and search for Elizabeth. Juliet reached out to Mark who was serving in the armed forces, to help locate Elizabeth, who had been captured by German soldiers. She also asked Sydney for more time to stay in the islands, causing Sydney to cancel several planned events. While there, Juliet resumed writing but changed her focus. Instead of writing articles about the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, Juliet decided to write about the lasting impact of the war on the people of the Guernsey Islands. That evening, Mrs. Stemple, the innkeeper, confided in Juliet that Elizabeth was not as virtuous as she appeared. Mrs. Stemple suggested that Elizabeth had relationships with German soldiers in exchange for luxuries. Juliet then goes to Pribby and shares the innkeeper's rumors about Elizabeth. She also asks about Kit's real father. When Pribby refuses to answer, Juliet turns to Adams for information. Adams reveals that he is not Kit's biological father. Kit's real father is Christian Hellman a German doctor who worked with Elizabeth at the local hospital, and was also Adam's friend. Juliet learns more details about Elizabeth and Hellman's relationship from Amelia. According to Amelia, Elizabeth planned to live with Hellman and their unborn child, but Hellman was sent back to Germany and died when his ship sank. The true reason why Amelia opposed Juliet writing an article about Elizabeth was her fear that the Germans would find out the truth about Kit's parentage and take her away. That evening, when Juliet returned to the inn, she found Mrs. Stimple in her room going through her belongings. Juliet felt angry about the invasion of her privacy and quickly packed her things and left the inn. She stayed at Pribby's house for a while. One day, Adams asked Juliet to drive Kit home since he had to work. After dropping Kit off to sleep in her room, Juliet sneaked into Adams' room and found his collection of books. While in Adams' room, Adams unexpectedly showed up, and they both felt awkward. It seemed that romantic feelings were developing between Adams and Juliet. However, Juliet, realizing she was engaged, tried to suppress these feelings. Juliet then asked Adams why Kit lived with him instead of her grandmother. Adams explained that before Elizabeth was captured by the German soldiers, she entrusted Kit to him, so he continued to care for Kit. Adams considered Kit as his own daughter and loved her dearly. Suddenly, Mark arrived and wanted to take Juliet home while they were talking. Mark criticized Juliet for not wearing her engagement ring but Juliet explained that she didn't want to show off luxury in the countryside. Meanwhile, Adams seemed jealous to see Juliet with her boyfriend, but he couldn't do anything about it. 
Mark's arrival at the Guernsey Islands brings news about Elizabeth. Juliet informs Amelia and the others that Elizabeth has been sent to the Ravensbrück concentration camp, where she tragically dies while protecting fellow prisoners. Upon hearing this devastating news, everyone becomes silent, overwhelmed with sadness. Amelia, especially, seems to lose all hope as she struggles with the loss of her daughters. Later that day, Juliet and Mark decide to return to London. Juliet says goodbye to Amelia and the others leaving Adams looking sorrowful as he watches his love leave along with her dreams. Back in London, Juliet feels a sense of emptiness in her life. She spends her days thinking and keeping to herself in her room, feeling that something remains unresolved in the Guernsey Islands. One night, Juliet meets with Mark and decides to end their engagement, giving back the diamond ring he had given her. After breaking up with Mark, Juliet starts writing again, this time focusing on the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. However, the manuscript stays unpublished, with Juliet's name left out as the author. Once finished, Juliet gives a copy of the manuscript to Sydney and sends another to the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Adams reads Juliet's cover letter aloud to the community members and realizes that she has ended her relationship with Mark. Adams decides to visit Juliet and immediately heads for London. Meanwhile, Juliet makes plans to return to the Guernsey Islands. As Juliet is about to get on the ferry, she sees Adams at the dock, and the two of them reunite. Just as Adams was going to propose to Juliet, she stopped him to ask the same question. Later, Adams is shown reading tales from Shakespeare to Kit, with Juliet beside him, both wearing wedding rings. So the moral of the story is never underestimate the power of a good book club, even if it's named after a potato peel pie. And remember, love can sprout unexpectedly, just like finding romance in a cozy island book club.